Dale, you are smart and you are strong and you are not as ugly as you think you are. Welcome in to the Bro Four Squad podcast, where we're just a bunch of bros drinking beer and talking movies. I am your host, the mayor, Jeff Hornacek. This is episode 126, a very special one it is. Before we get started with the movie discussion, let's go around and meet the fellow bros. We start in the paint with our enforcer, Matt Geiger. Now, Matt, I got cut off in traffic twice this week by two separate people driving Honda Civics. How would you have handled it? All I did was try to rear end them. Well, Honda is made in China, if I'm not mistaken, Jeff. So that's all you fucking need to know. Um, I would, you got to flip him the bird. Um, you got to roll your window down and threaten to fight him. But in today's uh, political climate, I'd be kind of careful because a lot of people are fucking strapping, if you know what I mean. So you don't want to push it a little too far. And also, I hope everyone's listening because we got to knock Banner off on this episode. I'm sick of Banner fucking saying that he's got the most views on any of these episodes. So Look, I hope I'm just everyone saying, tunes the in. Fans know, the fans know what's best. Great segue to the mad scientist, Brian Banner. Now, Banner, when we did your episode of your uh, music and movies of your life, it is still our highest viewed episode. So I got to ask, how has that changed you as a person? You know, I'm just super humble. The, you know, I don't let the money get to my head. I am buying a yacht, though. Um, and I'm going off on my own. I don't know if I told you guys that, but I don't need you guys anymore because I'm awesome. But I'm pretty That's much cool. the same person. I'll go off on your own with you. Yeah, I'll come too. Matt, All you right. want to come? Matt, I guess you're All inviting right, me. Cool. Sure. There we go. <laughs> it's Let's rude. Do it. We're going out on. We're gonna go out on a boat because I'm, I'm rich. Because you guys suck. All right. Well, this is. I think you're pushing the limits here of what's social decorum. And the man of the hour, our legal counsel, Ronnie Cycli. Ronnie, before we get into this, you're finally going to give the people a peek behind the curtain as to who you really are. Should we be concerned? Yeah, I think I'm going to show people how crazy I am because I'm going to probably be changing my answers mid-sentence. So, sorry. Sound like my uh, ex-wife's wedding vows. <laughs> he asked her a simple question. Do you swear? And she really hesitated. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by swear? All right, well, if you have not listened to our show before, or even if you have, we start every episode with the most important thing in any bro's life, and that is chess day. And our chess day topic for today was discovered by the enforcer, Matt Geiger. So, Matt, why don't you explain to the people what we are doing? So basically, if you're just joining us and you haven't checked out mine, Jeff's, Banner's, or Thurman's, Cycli is the last bro to do this, which is very interesting because I feel like I know more about you guys after this. And, we, I mean, we've been hanging out, some of us, all our lives, some of us last, what, five years, me and Banner. But I feel like I know you more, except for Banner, because I have no clue who <laughs> half the people you said for music <laughs> But the other ones, I digress. This is Movies and Music of the Bros Live featuring Ronnie Cycli this episode. So we're going to take you through a questionnaire. We're going to do movies first. On the docket for the first question is a movie or we can do a franchise that you can't stand. Okay, so again, I'm probably going to be bad at this because I, there's, I can't just give one. So genre for me is stuff I can't stand is sixth grade slapstick humor. Uh, I don't mind the occasional fart joke. I really don't. I like love Step Brothers, things like that. But uh, for what came to mind is movie 43. Don't know if you guys have seen that. Uh, one. Yeah, regrettably, yes. It is just god awful. And so I think that the, the movies that are just, I don't know, specifically made for 13 year olds, I understand there is a market for it, but I can't. I can't stand that. And uh, a the, I couldn't. I didn't finish it because it was so bad. The worst movie I've ever seen that I finished was called Leap Year, and it's Amy Adams, and she proposes uh, to I her didn't boyfriend. Think that was like fart humor, though. That no, yeah. no, 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 no. I was saying forty three is the fart humor, and I'm going to another movie that. I oh, okay. I thought yeah. you were trying to say okay. that was like six. I mean, like, <laughs> it no? was as bad. It, it maybe could have been. It would have been improved maybe with some fart humor. Um, but I watched that movie on an airplane. And usually movies on an airplane I just like because it's wasting time. Uh, it literally was painful to watch, but I had no other option but to sit there for two hours and watch uh, Amy Adams pro uh, propose to her boyfriend who didn't want to marry her. So it was terrible. Which first off That's is just it. unrealistic. That's what it's about. 
that's literally what it's about. Because in um, Ireland, the woman proposes on a leap year, right? Yeah, that's the... that's, that's literally. Oh, it, it, really? But she's not Irish. She's not Irish. But he is. But he is. Yeah, and he has no interest Who's in the guy, married. Killian Murphy, Matthew no, Good. Yeah, okay, that's the I... only Irish actor I know. So. <laughs> but he spells oh, good and... with an e on the end, so it's Irish. <laughs> See, oh, my wife fine. just held up a sign that said After Earth, but I was going to talk about <laughs> really, <laughs> really... My wife really, does that all the time. <laughs> that's all she does. Cue cards over here. I was going to say, I, I mean, we'll get into that a little bit. That movie is so bad, I enjoyed it. So that's a whole other topic. <laughs> There's an art to a bad movie. Absolutely. How oh, yeah. did your wife have the resources to make a cue card <laughs> that said After Earth? I don't even know where she came from. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a professionally... She's she in the printed. other room. She had this print. You know she lived here. All right, moving moving right along. A movie or franchise you feel is overrated. Okay, this might this is an interesting one for me because he's going to say my... something stupid like fucking Star Wars, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not dumb. Um, he knows better. I, so one of my favorite films. I mean, this is not this is not controversial. Is the Godfather Godfather Part Two absolutely incredible? iconic movies that i love to this day no matter like they are not boring films to me but what i think are really overrated for the most part are gangster films yeah they pretty much repeat the same process usually it begins with someone who's not corrupt who just is getting a little job gets in the job gets in a little over their heads um i just watched the irishman a few months ago incredibly overrated in my opinion fantastic cast fantastic director is that but the bell? i just feel like the gangster no. films really just repeat themselves over and over. And again, like I love the departed. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying every gangster film, but I just feel like for the most part, we're getting the same idea thrown at us every time. And, yeah. uh, and we're supposed to love it because, you know, gangster films are iconic. So what do you feel like? Are, are you saying like, give me an example on a couple. Oof. Okay. Uh, good fellas. I, 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 it's, it's overrated. Uh, I just, I, I, I mean, it's great, but it's, it's great. But, um, Scarface, overrated. Matt, the drop that, uh, Tom Hardy, James Gandolfini one that you didn't really like. Yeah, that was, a, I, I'm, I'm with you on, what was the second one you said? It was uh, good. For all, so I'm with good, you on Scarface because the third act Scarface. is fucking great, but the whole rest of the movie, I'm like, let's get doing I something. I wanted nothing more and i did like I, I enjoyed the movie but when i say overrated i'm not saying these movies are bad right like oh they yeah just yeah. don't deserve the praise they're getting and that's how i feel about scarface like if scarface had been when i watch it if i didn't know the um you know everything about that movie i think i would have enjoyed it much more and we all know this we've talked about this on the pod the higher expectations you have going into the movie the less likely you're going to actually like it and so i just think i've gotten to this place where every gangster film is always oscar worthy it's always oscar nominated right like it's so hard for a gangster film not to be nominated for something so i think the bar has been set really high because there are iconic films but i think they miss more than they hit also let's just admit we can't enjoy the good gangster films if some of them don't suck right oh yeah very true have you seen casino a long time ago yeah that's not the one that i i think is like i think that's better than goodfellas myself yeah, Goodfellas, um, again, I think it goes to what everyone talks about. And to me, that's a definition of overrated. For some reason, everyone talks about Goodfellas. I'm like, I don't know. It just it doesn't do it for me. They're all the same all right. beginning, middle, end. All right. What do you feel is a movie that is underrated? Um, okay. I, and again, this is to me is what's not really talked about. I think we'll all agree. This Muppets take movie. Manhattan, right? Well, that is absolutely <laughs> Rated, first of all. <laughs> uh, have prisoners, Hugh Jackman, Jake Gyllenhaal. Love I, and I, I never met anyone who And our Riddler, movie, Paul Dano. Yeah, who watched this movie that doesn't love it, but I've never heard it just talked about casually. You, you, didn't, you didn't, surprisingly, I thought it was going to get nominated for some awards. Nothing was ever brought up from it. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's, it's a dark film. It, it's really about, like, pushing the limits of parenthood and what you might do if you think your kid is in trouble, even if it's bad. I mean, I found that film incredible and it just, it's never mentioned. Another film. Great twist is, also. Yeah. Amazing twist. And Primal Fear, Richard Gere, 
uh, and uh, oh my gosh, uh, Edward Norton. Edward Norton, his first role. A young Edward Norton, yeah. Fucking iconic movie, in my opinion. Not not talked about. I, I just I just it shocks me when I watched that movie. I was like, how is this not one of like the top fifty lists? And of I bet course, if you go to a, an opinion. I bet if you go to a wine bar with Edward Norton, though, he would talk about it. I would, I would Richard, absolutely. Richard love Gere that. is underrated. Bro, for Squad Hall underrated. of Fame. I mean, you oh, picked up a hooker and made her like a housewife. Yeah, I great agree. film. I don't have my list, but speaking of Richard Gere, Unfaithful, Diane Lane, Total Babe. <laughs> yeah, that's a good yeah. one too. She fucked that. Hispanic. That was a uh, uh, that was like porn before you know when we were kids because <clears throat> if you didn't have a scrambled channel and that was before it was on the internet. Oh yeah, and for <laughs> and she was like fifty years old and she still got it. I mean, she'll never lose it. Anywho, uh, what is a movie you love? Well, I'm gonna have to say this. I didn't. I was thinking of. There's so many movies I love. Uh, you know, I'll give a shout out to like Brave. Uh, I think you said Braveheart. You cut out. Franchise in Braveheart. Yes, I did. Um, I'm gonna okay. go with Harry Potter because that is my. That was my youth. Uh, between the books and the movies I just kind of lumped together. It was probably the only franchise that I was showing up eight hours early before the movie started on opening night and getting in line, uh, dressing in costumes. Like, that's something I'm going to have uh, my memories forever. And, uh, you know, we don't do that anymore because now we have reserved seating. Now we have, you know, you can get there five minutes before the movie starts or when we can go back to movies. But Harry Potter, to me, is as iconic as it can be. And I think I can watch one of those films and, and always takes me back to where I was when I first read or watched them. I think the Harry Potter franchise is our generation's Star Wars. Jesus they all Christ. went to I'm the theaters. Up. They were amazed by it. <laughs> and that was how we wrong. were. As, that's how we were as kids. We couldn't wait for it to come out. And obviously there's a lot of differences between the two, but what is another huge franchise that we grew up as a kid? We saw the first one and we couldn't wait for the next one to come out. And the next one, there is a franchise. Jurassic Park. I don't think uh, it's that level, though. I mean, I agree, yeah, not but... to, that they weren't these world phenomenons that Star Wars and Harry Potter were. I'm, I'm not saying that's the not Avengers, the yeah. but we weren't really <clears throat> kids. Yeah, right. We, I, I, I think the Avengers, we were, we were older than that. Land Before Times. Fuck at least, yeah. at least the first twelve. Right. I, I don't really have a problem with Harry Potter. I just realize they're not for me, which is fine. But uh, when people compare them to Star Wars, this is what I usually say. I'm like, I don't agree with that because Harry Potter doesn't have a Harrison Ford, which basically gets like the mainstream people that if if Han Solo was not in Star Wars, it'd be nerdy. But since he is, people feel like okay, I can watch this and not be called out and stuff like that. Harry Potter doesn't have that person that's like the man's man that kind of gets the mainstream person feeling okay to go watch this movie, in my opinion. I mean, considering how it did at the box office, I didn't don't think it had a problem convincing people to go watch it. So, I mean... No, I'm saying that, it, like, people will say that Harry Potter are for nerds, but Star Wars yeah. isn't. Like, I've heard that conversation before. If they would have had, like a, like, a badass fucking dude... You know, like a Chris Hemsworth in it or something. I think I, got, I think it's really unfair to compare really the two in that sense because one is did. like space. So there is a no talk about it. No, 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 no. I wasn't comparing the franchises. I was saying the cultural effect that it had on our generation is the same that Star Wars had on our parents' generation. Well, here's you can't the, the two. You have one that's one that's space, science fiction, fa and then the other one is fantasy and wands and magic those are two completely different things i mean i should probably see it before i talk about it. i've never seen one why would so. you do that, what the though? fuck do i know, well, I don't yeah, know. why would you why would you do that one thing cycling and i actually <laughs> talked about uh last weekend which will be interesting going forward i've always had in a sort of an affinity adjacent for the harry potters just knowing how much cycling and you love them and thurmond also um, but with the J.K. Rowling development, I mean, it'll be interesting to see how future generations are, I guess, one, introduced to Harry Potter, but like what its legacy is. I mean, we always talk about separating artists from art, and I hope that happens. What'd she do? She basically just bashed uh, <laughs> transgenders repeatedly. <laughs> okay, I didn't. 
I, I don't I don't keep up with J.K. Rowling. I guess. You don't follow her on Twitter? I don't no, need the other not people. Not for like, years, no. People, like, what are you doing? I guess when you made a, make a billion dollars, you don't really care about, like, protecting your IPs anymore. You just okay. say what you well, want. Well, Ben and I have talked about this, that, I mean, I fully believe we're going to get a remake of the entire book series probably sure. within the next 20, 30 years. Yeah. And New generation. Cool. Uh, you know, the we're all everyone who grew up with Harry Potter is going to have their kids who are going to be teenagers at that point. Um, I mean, Hollywood is not <laughs> they're not uh, going to try and stop doing remakes. So um, definitely think we're going to see more of it. All right, everyone, uh, take a sniff of your wine while I ask this next question. Ronnie Cycli, what made you fall in love with film? <sighs> you know, you get taken away. Uh, and I think that's a really corny answer, but like it just, you know, for that, for those two hours, hour and a half, like, so are you cut out? What was um, the movie? Here. It was taken. Taken's no, your fucking it, movie. No, I, didn't, I just heard you. He, I just heard you, you get said taken you get away. taken away by something. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Did you? You asked why I fell in love with movies, right? What yeah. Movie? So what made you fall in love with film? What movie? Yeah. Like, oh, like, oh, what film made me love? Like, I think for me. It was probably Star Wars. That's one of the earliest movies I ever remember seeing. Um, Phantom Menace. The Godfather. And, it's, and, and this is really funny. Scream. Scream, I was 10 years old. Huh. And, 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 and Ransom, I was like 6 or 7. That's what like, started my love oh, for yeah. horror movies. I remember you telling me reason, how scared you were about Ransom. I was a kid's age when he got kidnapped. Like These movies, which I will always credit my parents, between Godfather, uh, between Star Wars... Um, and, and these horror films that they let me watch. My parents were strict in a lot of ways, but for some reason, when it came to art and movies, they were, they were fine. They, did, they knew I was going to be scared, and they would still let me watch this all the time. And I think that's why I love horror movies so much. Matt, what's is, the Ashley Schaefer line from Kenny Powers? Let the boy watch. Bless the boy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Banner, do you want to take that layup, or should I? That's all no, you. I'll do it. I'll do it. Go ahead and check out me and Banner's Scream movie commentary that was ah, fucking a you long just time ago. You that is a great commentary. film. Oh, sorry. All right, uh, throwback. Yeah. We haven't done a yeah. commentary on that. We should. We Have should. We? I, I thought say, we though, did. We did. No, you didn't. It's well, coming out this Halloween, I think. Okay. Well, then, well I didn't put it on YouTube. Someone else did. <clears throat> Was, I don't know. Netflix. I feel like October's I'm... October's always a blur with Oktoberfest and then pumpkin beer. I don't remember most October's. We don't even know what content <laughs> we're fucking doing. That's this how is deep a behind the, the curtain look. We are. We're all on drugs. We're drunk. Everyone yeah, almost like, well, these guys with really are each other. <laughs> Where the fuck am I at? Okay, he answered that question. And we I was gonna finish. Hold on, I had one more. Oh, so go make. ahead. Sorry. Say, and then my final one was, sorry, I told you I had way too many, James Bond films. And uh, Hornsec knows this. That's my dad's iconic franchise yeah. for him. So we watched Star Wars together because my dad never watched the Star Wars movies. But that was the first, like, my dad would always have a James Bond movie on growing up. Always. That's and, just classy as fuck, really. Yeah. And his my name's... mom and his first date was a James Bond film, funny enough. Uh, so those movies, like, I just remember iconically seeing because they weren't kids' movies. Like, yeah, I watched Aladdin, I watched the Disney movies, but my parents were showing me all the time, and I just fell in love with it. I, I just, I love that they didn't hold back, and I love that I was able to see such great films at a young age. You just named two films I can't stand and was overrated. How are we all even friends? This fucking makes no sense. All right. We were before what is something you can watch over and over again? Oh, you guys are going to hate me for this, because I know, I know how people feel about these. The Lord of the Rings movies. God, uh, the opposite of everyone else's. You have six I, hours. That was my can't to watch stand franchise. Six hours, dude. I have all three director's cuts, which are like four and a half hours each. Jesus Christ! I could watch. All and you three guys say I have a problem. <laughs> they are. You can both have a problem. Perfect movies. I love it so much. The fuck out of here! You can't stay <laughs> awake through them. Oh, I can definitely stay awake through them, and. I know it's controversial. I have the there's people who either fucking love them like I do, or they're like, I saw it once, cool, it was good. From start to finish, I mean, what like what, Return of the King won eleven Academy Awards, I believe. I mean, the what they were able to accomplish in literally three years, not taking two years in between movies. I don't know why, 
I can just put all three of them on in a sitting and have no problem. And to me, those movies feel really short. I will say this. I love, love, love the fight scene at the end of the two towers. And the elven guy has given us some great memes. Oh, absolutely. And of course, we who can forget that one does not simply... <laughs> That's yeah, like I do like that meme. That's great. Yeah, that's like one of the best ones that exists. I knew I knew I was going to get in trouble for that, but I'm, I I'm thought just that be honest, was guys. from Game of Thrones for so long until I actually watched Game of Thrones. I did no clue what that meme was from. <laughs> okay, so you're saying you haven't watched Lord of the Rings either? I I watched The Hobbit. Um, oh, no. I think an hour of it because our That's not a good company one. took oh, it terrible. took us to it for a Christmas thing, and I fell asleep halfway through. Had a dream. I woke up in the theater. Everyone was gone. I didn't have a way home and woke up and like screamed. And then that's all I remember. <laughs> yeah, no, it. the Hobbit trilogy was terrible. I it think they connect. Happened. I'm not really sure. Um, what is a movie that changed your life? So I, I have two here. Uh, I'm going to say American History X. Oh, yeah. fucking great movie. Uh, Finally. Pro- probably... <laughs> <laughs> probably the Talk first about. movie i think i was like sixth grade or seventh grade when i saw it and again edward norton uh fucking i in my opinion deserved the oscar for this and i think it was a little too edgy at the time playing a Ooh, neo-nazi one that, no uh, i'm looking it up i can't remember it was definitely I'm looking i remember it up keep talking yeah. Um, but I mean, the, the role itself, uh, I think he put on 30, 35 pounds of muscle, um, for the role. Um, I remember watching it because it was the first movie I think that I was able to watch that had a message, but wasn't like over the top, like as, as a kid, you know, you watch those like, Oh, you know, don't do drugs type stuff. Like the message that movie was able to convey in such an amazing emotional way um the first time i saw it i was flipping channels and it was on the curb stomp scene which was oh. I, I yeah which i was like what the hell is they this? showed that it, it, did, on USA, do you know what just, a curb stomp was before no, that I, I, I did not know, i didn't know there was a term for it um and yeah, like, just I, suburban we'll kids we had no fun clue it. what that meant um no. sorry jack will do this enough as as short... jack nicholson oh, as good as it gets 1998 best actor I don't know about that. I, you know, I'm going to throw it. Edward Norton deserved it on that one. But I, I think CNN and Fox News needs to just quit do it and just play that movie. And I think everyone will just <laughs> like, yeah. OK, maybe we should just love each other. End <laughs> this isn't worth it. <laughs> it, it, it's just and I remember just like the end, the emotional end of the movie. You were just gutted. I mean, you were exhausted. It's not that long a movie. I think it's like an hour, 40 minutes. But I remember just afterwards, it was the first movie I think I sat there for the entirety of the end credits and, and wasn't really able to like say anything and just like how to like take in what I just saw. Uh, if you haven't seen American history X, please do it. I think it could be one of those underrated type films, not really talked about uh, even 20 years later. I think it's 20 years old, but I think it, I mean, absolutely needs to be seen by everybody. Interesting. You bring that up because with everyone on social media right now, talking about just what's happening today, I'm surprised memes or something isn't brought up about that movie because it basically just hits exactly oh, what we're going through right now yeah, that, it's that very that's very interesting too realistic it's too true yeah it's it's very fucking well done especially just showing how you know just people that you know don't really have much in their life can just fall into you know some cult like or religion or real it doesn't have to be a, a bad thing like you know certain religion but it could be a you know, bad thing like a cult, but they just follow it blindly because they have nothing else to turn to. Right, it's very, they need, very well done, very well acted. They need a, a sense of like home and like and like family, really. And that supporting cast, Jeff, with um Alan Matthews from Boy Meets World and Beverly De- D'Angelo as the mom. Dude, and, Alan uh, Matthews Pecker is the kid. Like, yeah. so fucking good. I think that's what made it creepier. Alan Matthews, like seeing him so out of his element, and it's not a huge part, really, but. No. It's like really haunting because like Cycle was saying, as a kid, you're like, uh, this is not like <laughs> childhood that I know. Like this yeah. shit is real now. <laughs> He's singing a song about Jews at one point and you're just right. like, what does Boy Meets World? What are you doing? He's not the quirky bully at Eric Matthews. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> the fat guy who is also in Boy Meets World and in Blow and in Remember the Titans is the friend. That's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Who's like now really skinny and ripped, I think. 
That's what I've heard. I didn't see a picture. I don't think I want to. It will destroy he's my, my childhood. He's my dream because, you know, I'm fat as fuck. So maybe okay, one day. But he has a Hollywood dietitian, man. You have no chance of doing that. That's Is he true. more buff than Jonathan Lipnicki? Have you seen him? I don't think. No, I don't think so. He's fucking jacked. Oh, my God. He I'm looking at the picture right now. He's got he a 19 pack. Should we take work. a masturbation break or should we keep going? Um, uh, what? No. No, what this, is, a this is the one where you're thinking about right before you fall asleep. You're like, ah, I just got to knock this out real quick. Just then I can go I to sleep. sleep better, too. I mean, that's impressive. The I'm, gonna, I'm not going to clean it up. I'm going to sleep in it. I think Cycle had um, one more, actually. Did yeah, you? Oh. Well, I was gonna, it's kind oh. of a similar theme, to be honest with you. It's like the drug movie of racist movies like American History X is Requiem for a Dream. Uh, mm-hmm. It's um, it's one of those movies that I think most people say they only want to see one time and never see again. Great and score. understandably, so, oh my! Maybe the most iconic movie score for me. It's up there. Whoa! With, like we talked. Whoa! Well, if you, whoa! whoa, whoa. Is, I, I said it was Mark. great. Didn't say it was you iconic. Said, you need to him. slow your fucking roll. I'm just saying. I think the Requiem for it, it's still used in songs today. It's still used in trailers today. It is. I I, I love it. Um, but it's like, don't take it advantage. Of, no. If, no. They should show Requiem for a Dream to every middle school in the country, and we'll never have a drug problem again. I don't know, man. These kids don't Dang. listen. But yeah. <laughs> I think they just be texting the whole time. Yeah. Like they wouldn't care at all. They just like, that guy, whatever. Was that guy the Joker? That's what they say. Does that squad suck? They're like, it did, kids. It did. Okay, what is a movie that surprised you? I think we're gonna get all agree on this one. Solo. Yeah. 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 Oh, did you? Yeah. Uh, that's. Um, I think we all were really disheartened with how the sequel trilogy has gone and did go with disney and i think everyone was feeling a little burnt out on the star wars even though i i can speak for all of us we're all massive massive fans and i think i saw it out of obligation uh, last jedi had come out six months before i believe and i almost didn't even want to see it because i didn't want it to like hurt me even more than the last jedi did and and again like we talked about earlier with the overrated Maybe because I went in with such low expectations, but I re- I rewatched it. I think it holds up. What's it's the Michael Scott good. quote? I'm ready to get hurt again. <laughs> That's Cycle- what I said going into the ret- rise of Skywalker. Cycle, like, you know what surprised good. me about the movie? You came down and we watched it together. You remember those shithead kids in the bathroom who saw the showing before us and spoiled the ending for me when I was peeing? I and felt I was so like, bad for you. I sat down. And I was like, I think I just heard something big that happens at the end from some dumbass kids, but I'm not going to tell you. And that's really good of you because you could have just made me suffer just like you had to. And yeah, I leaving. definitely would have told any one of you guys if I found out. We're leaving and Cycle goes, was that the thing? I was like, that was definitely the thing that they said. Was, can we spoil it? I mean, at this point? Yeah, yeah. sure. It was Darth Maul at the end, Yeah, right? The one kid is like, I'm literally seeing the 745 showing opening night and this kid's peeing and goes, can't believe Darth Maul showed up at the end. Did he say it like he was like pissed? No, or he like, was what the fuck like, is that? Or was he excited? I thought it was cool. All right. Well, at least he has a future. There was a Simpsons episode back when The Simpsons was in its golden time, and Homer and Marge are walking out of like their first date after seeing Empire. And he's like, I cannot believe Darth Vader was uh, Luke's dad. And there's a whole line of people <laughs> waiting to see it. That's awesome. I can't believe all the shitty shows I watch on FX. And after it's done, I'm like, I can't believe they made like three more of those. And then I'll watch that. I said, I actually want to see more of this, but they're not going to do anything with this. So that's the that's the world we live in. We can't Maybe get the good Clark shit. fucking fantastic in Dude, it as well. Paul Bettany was even pretty good. She'll always be my queen. All right. What is the movie that was best to see in theaters? Can we do guilty pleasure? What is your guilty pleasure? <laughs> <laughs> You guys know one of them, and it's Titanic. I, I fucking What's the guilt? will defend that movie. On <laughs> exactly. I agree. But you were reading about like, people like, I was pleasure. on a Reddit thread the other day of overrated films, and Titanic was up there. And I was like, what? Yeah. And I was nah. like, you fuckers have no they idea. They obviously or... haven't watched it from the point of view that Cal is not a bad like, guy. Fucking no. Billy Zane is a saint. How dare you? And uh, I, so, I mean, everyone who's listened to the pod knows how much I love Titanic. But my true guilty pleasure movie is Legally Blonde. 
fucking love that movie. Hey! Oh, okay. I'm taking the and yeah. it's, it's harmless. And just, I, it's fun. Maybe because of the law school connection, but I, it was so much fun. I like Luke Wilson. Funny, the connection is that her professor is the captain of the Titanic. Oh, yeah. You're right. So there you go. Together. There you go. All Every connect. movie connects. It's one universe. <laughs> okay, what is the best movie you've seen in theaters? So I'm going to go with a movie I actually don't really like that. Well, I like it, but I don't really like that much, but it was Avatar. Because when you yeah. watch it not in theaters, it, it's fine. But it Three times a year movie for me. What's that? Watch that movie three times a year. Oh, well, that's scheduled or <laughs> just half your year. Just happens. It just happens. was on my flight to Thailand on a 16 hour flight. And I was like, oh, sweet. I just watched that. That's a fourth of the flight. We're good. I'll, we'll be there soon. Um, I just think it was like obviously the way it was shot. I'm really confused on how we're supposed to be getting like three more of these. Um, I still don't understand how that's supposed to work. I, I still don't think they're real, to be honest. That's, just, we've been hearing They're going to be underwater, guys. Calm down. And yeah, but I mean, like I said, that I can separate to me. The best in theater to me meant I like really enjoyed it in theater, but I, you know, it doesn't do the same thing for me at home. Mm. And I don't think I'd watch it at home. It's um, a theater and I was going to the theater experience for sure i mean and everyone was obsessed with that like that technology and the way it was filmed because i don't actually like 3d technology to be honest with you and that movie made it better um and then, like, I, I saw that with you and your dad at christmas actually and i remember right. that scene where they're like on the pterodactyls going down the waterfall i was like all right this is pretty fucking cool yeah like, exactly it's all for about the visuals and i think james cameron's not he does things so he can fund his other projects. I mean, he always does a good job of it, and we never hear from him for about 10 years, and then he comes back and does it again. Um, and I was going to say a movie that I watched last year um, that I thought was it was nominated for Best Movie, but I, th- I don't think it's going to hold up as much when I watch it on TV. Uh, it was 1917, and it was my call on the on in the beginning of 2019. It was my big yeah. pick, my surprise pick for the for films. And I definitely loved it. I loved the way it was shot. It's shot to make it feel like it's in one shot for two hours, um, I, it, one cut. And um, but I think the uh, draw on it kind of what it wasn't be it wouldn't be as exciting the second time around or on a smaller screen. Um, I, I thought it was beautifully done and really original. But for me, it was like worth it to see in, on in screen. I'm not as motivated to rent it. That was the one that was supposed to clean up at the Oscars, too, and then Parasite just came and just started mm-hmm. fucking nowhere. All right, what is the like, movie? Oh, go ahead. I was going to say it was like Tyson getting knocked out by Buster Douglas. Yeah, like, no one wants to talk. I am Buster Douglas. Uh, what is a movie you should have seen by now? I'm going to get fucking annihilated. Endgame. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> I thought you told me you watched this. No, I you watched Infinity you. War like six months ago. So it's uh, crazy you, that two like you yeah, have Disney Plus. I know you can <laughs> literally watch it at your fingertips it at has any nothing time. To do with, I don't want to watch it because I know it deserves it deserves a full the three hour sitting I, where it I need to be focused. My attention and I it, I know right now and we all are guilty of this of we're just. You know, we'll put on a show because a movie's too long, yet we'll watch five hours of a show, yeah. right? Like, you're binge-watching. And then you see, an, like, like, a movie that's like, oh, two and a half hours, three hours. You're like, I don't have time for that, even though we do. And I think it's like... There's no like, built-in and, potty breaks. Yeah, well, exactly. And I know it's just a movie that I'm going to love. I know how you guys all feel about it. I know... I just need to give it its fair time and just like set out on my calendar like you're fucking doing it and let me uh, let me watch yeah. it with you because i want to see your face at the the end scene i'm sure you've seen clips of it i have seen clips and obviously with what happened uh, last week uh how you know yeah. heartbreaking uh everything was and it's like it's always just on like one of those like i'm gonna put it on i'm gonna put it on tomorrow tomorrow and so yeah like it has nothing to do i love avengers i love the marvel universe everyone knows i am more of a dc batman but that doesn't take away what they have been able to do cinematically i know how iconic endgame is so i promise i will watch it at least you admitted it that's the first step i almost didn't want to write it down because i know you're kind of jealous of you because i wish i had a movie like that i haven't watched just to give me something i'm kind of getting i'm re-watching like eight different things now 
just because I have nothing to fucking watch. All right, Jeff, that's all I got. Till next time. I just need a new one. All right, we will uh, tease the the music portion of Ronnie Cycli's life uh, for Do You Even Lift, Bro? But that moves us on to the second part of our show. (laughs) I'll start. (laughs) Which is our protein shake. 20th row. (laughs) (laughs) Where we... We go around and talk about what's in our cup, also known as what have we watched lately? Banner, why don't you lead us off? All right. Uh, first thing I watched, uh, the one and only Ivan. Um, this is a Disney movie. It was supposed to drop in theaters, obviously, with everything going on in today's climate. It dropped on Disney Plus. Feel good movie. Uh, for Sam free, Rockwell. Too, right? Yeah, for bucks. free. Yeah, you didn't have to pay 30 bucks for it. Um, and th- movies like this, Disney Plus is their platform. Uh, this is a based on true events. Basically, you have a silverback gorilla, grew up like literally living in a family's house, um, sleeping in their bed, and then he was either sold or they created. I'm not really sure um, how the real life events goes, but they basically had this like circus of animals that were in a mall in Washington State. He lived in this cage for 27 years. Uh, and then obviously some activists came, they found out about it. He ended up in the Atlanta zoo for about another 20 years. Um, he lived to be about 50 where he lived out his days, but Sam Rockwell's in it. Brian Cranston, Angelina Jolie. Um, it's a solid movie guys. It's, I wouldn't have paid to see it in theaters. I probably wouldn't have taken my kid to go see it in theaters, but it was on Disney plus and that's the platform for him. It was good. The technology of where they've come in animals and having animals talk is incredible. So does, do the animals talk to humans or do they just talk to each other? They just talk to each other. They don't talk to the humans. Okay. That was my one kind of hang up. I was like, yeah. if this is Brian Cranston talking to a gorilla, I don't know. No, Brian Cranston is, his character is really interesting. He is obsessed with the gorilla and obsessed with certain things and things happen to him in his life that, uh, the zoo or the, the circus is all he has. And it's it's one of those movies where there isn't a bad guy, um, but there isn't really a good guy or a hero either. It's just a story. Sounds like life. Yeah. Wow. God. And then, uh, God. Matt, you can I go ahead and go I just realized pee. now why I'm here. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> it does Matt, all do matter. Wanna, do you want to go ahead and go pee? Because I know you don't like watching... Uh, great space western shows. Um, you can just go ahead and go now. Rewatch uh, the entire oh. first season of The Mandalorian. Yeah. I'm gonna get a beer. Man. Guys, Wait, you haven't seen The Mandalorian? No, I'm watching it. I rewatched it with because the new season's oh. coming out, so I wanted to just refresh myself. Guys, everything is perfect in that except for Carl Weathers. You want yeah. more of him? No, I want <laughs> I want him gone, and some for Let's some fucking reason they're letting him direct an episode in the second season. So you know that's going to be a fucking shit show. I don't get Carl Weathers thing. I never will. It, it's like, did you watch any of the round table like making ofs they did? No, I didn't. So he oh. is so conceited. I, I was like, I thought he was playing a joke at first, like being sort of sarcastic. The way he talks about himself, dude, I was like, are we talking about you or like Al Pacino? I don't, I don't think he so has his, the right to have that kind of ego. No, his yeah, character was Apollo supposed, Creed. Oh. Me too. Was that, Chubbs. Known, known for his great <laughs> acting. Yeah, well, more people now know That's it. Yeah. Um, his character was supposed to have like prosthetics. And Carl Weathers, I'm guessing John Favreau was just an actor's director, but. Carl Weathers was like, and I told John, you know, you don't pay for this, pointing to his face. He goes, and put prosthetics on it. And John Favreau, I guess, was like, dude, what the fuck ever? Just show up to set tomorrow. He's like, look, you're cheap, and that's all I need right now. (laughs) Exactly. Anyway. Anyway, it's a great show. Matt, I know you have morals and blah, 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 whatever, but... Make, I need to, like I will, a bad thing. There are going. three fucking people on this pod tonight that will give you their username and login just to watch this show. Then you can delete it and go back to your, oh, everything fucking Matt, sucks because Ryan Johnson's Matt, that's like, like, the thing. Matt's like, it was never about money. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
<laughs> Someone has to draw a line in the sand. And you all are on my side yelling at it. Now you're on the other side yelling back at me. It makes no fucking sense at all. Because I, I think you were the only just... one that actually said you were going to boycott Star Wars. We realized we just hate Ryan Johnson. Except for Knives Out. I, yeah. I don't... I, I still haven't seen Knives Out. I don't think I've ever said I was going to boycott. I don't like that word. <clears throat> um, I think I, just after when shit came out, I'm like, nah, I'll, I'll get around to seeing that, but you're going to have to prove something to me. And then after eight months went by, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to fucking stand still right here in my ivory tower. I'm like, this, I guess, it's nice. I guess 15 Emmy nominations isn't enough to prove that it's a good show. Fool me once. <laughs> Falling for that again. That's all I had. What else? That's it. That's it. All right, Geiger. How about you? What's in your cup? I got three things. Uh, last night on TNT was Walking Tall, the rock version. I love Walking Tall. You see this tall. while yeah. a look. <laughs> um, you gave it a poke. The rock kind of acts in it. It's not that bad. It's a badass story. So he comes back being special forces to his hometown. He doesn't like the way his hometown's running, so he just beats everyone's fucking ass and becomes sheriff and tries to take it over. Uh, lest, we for, uh, lest we forget, Johnny Knoxville's in it. Oh, yeah. Neil and, McDonough, and, who's the bad guy, I actually really like him when he's in stuff. I love him in every fucking thing he's in. And Johnny Knoxville, not that bad of an actor. I'm a, I'm a huge Knoxville fan. I mean, come on. That's right You're in our fan. fucking wheelhouse. I mean, 90s kids, and then his jackass. I mean, I... I liked him in um it wasn't Starsky and uh fuck the Dukes of Hazard. Uh, Dukes I didn't of Hazard. That yeah. We would. He's fine. He's William Scott Stan. Yeah. <laughs> so uh that's on TNT a lot. If you get that uh chance, catch it. No, um, the other on, thing guys, real quick. Doesn't he like just carry around a two by four like the whole movie? Yeah, everyone he's else just... has machine guns and stuff, but he doesn't need it because he's special forces, which makes no sense because they use guns. But he used guns has better. Okay. Does he uh, go to Iraq with just a piece of wood and he <laughs> liberates <laughs> villages? <laughs> the the little uh, people's champ in me, though, I remember seeing it in theaters. I was excited that he did rock bottom someone through a casino table, which I was I was like, fuck yeah. Do you think it was hard uh, to him to do that? He was probably like, I don't know, man. It's like, I don't want to separate you know, my work from this. I bet the director's like, I got an idea. That That's when he was still a wrestler during that, because I remember him pimping that movie when he came back to wrestle. That wasn't... <laughs> He wasn't that big then. Uh, second thing I watched, this has been quoted on social media all the time, the Imagine She's White um, speech that McConaughey gave. And I was just like, you know what? That's a fucking great movie, so I'm going to watch it. A Time to Kill. And going to Banner's book thing, if you tell me that a movie is based on a John Grisham novel, I will fucking watch it, because I've never seen a bad one. And this is probably his best one. And... It's the role that made McConaughey basically a household name and took him from Wooderson to a serious actor. Samuel Jackson, this was before he was in everything. I mean, he was obviously Oscar worthy. Sandra Bullock was in it, which I totally forgot. Keither and Donald Sutherland was in it, which was what? fucking great. Both yeah. the Sutherlands? Because uh, Donald was um, McConaughey's like lawyer that got him in the game. That's who he tootled on. And Kiefer was a guy that joined the KKK later. Oh. I don't remember I don't even, I don't even remember Kiefer in it at all, but that's yeah. interesting. But uh, it's it's a very good film, guys. It's really fucking fun to watch. Very well casted, and Cycli probably loves it. It's about lawyering and stuff. Modern <laughs> day to Kill a Mockingbird, film. may I say? Probably. Ooh. Absolutely. I would just, always agree with that. Yeah. Is that streaming Actually, anywhere? To Kill a Mockingbird, a I don't is kind of dated, honestly. I think it's time to kill's better. Fucking gun in my head. I think it's time and to remake To Kill a Mockingbird. Probably. I'm surprised they have it. I yeah. agree. Atticus way, like John Grisham, he wrote one nonfiction book, and it's about the area where me and Banner live. It's the only nonfiction he yep. ever wrote, and it's fucking incredible. It's called The Innocent Man. It, well, obviously, I There's it actually a, a so, Netflix miniseries about it as well. Yeah, I tried watching that. It's not. It's not it, what I thought. Yeah, it's different. It wasn't what I was hoping it would be, but it's worth a read, honestly. And he and the way he writes is obviously he writes like it's fiction. But you know what not, else he wrote? This was crazy. You know what else he wrote, guys? He wrote the book that Christmas with the Cranks is based on. Wow. I don't know if you're being sarcastic. They can't all be hits, you know. No. 
Christmas the Cranks is great, and I'm not I'm not lying. It's true. Every every good artist does a Christmas album sooner or later. Why do we need to Chuck. base Christmas with the Cranks on a book? Just write the script. It's not that crazy of a. <laughs> and because uh, they wanted that nomination for adapted screenplay. That's true. So, so the last thing I watched, and guys, the reason why we do this is not just a bullshit on what we watch. We actually kind of. Hope that you take our recommendations and watch it along with us. And Jeff had a recommendation last week that he basically took his forearm, shoved it against my fucking throat. He's like, listen here, you fat piece of S. You got to fucking watch this. You'll like it. So I did. And Selling Sunset on Netflix is a fucking fantastic fucking show. And well, fantastic. Jeff, thank, you, th- 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 thank you for telling me to watch this. Because after the first 10 minutes... When this new girl starts, and it's basically about a real estate agent in fucking the hills in California. It's a reality show, so people at home. Yes. Know. So once she starts the first ten minutes and says maybe half a sentence, and the bitchy girl's like, "I just don't like her." I'm like, "I'm fucking sold on this. This is a fantastic fucking show." <laughs> I would. I feel like this is say, right up my alley, but I haven't seen it. You, you. I would say my favorite um, story is. She- Forty-two, which is, I mean, she's still very good looking. Dating a twenty-five-year-old that's what is he from Greece? Whose name is Romaine? Romaine, France, like lettuce, not Roman. Yeah. Romaine, like the lettuce. And the greatest question she asked: Well, don't you kind of miss, you know, getting with chicks and stuff like that? And he's like, Yeah. When she wants him to propose to him, which is fucking great. <laughs> I just think, Matt, it's good anytime couples are having problems to fix them. Just propose to each other. Yeah, yeah, that I or mean, have a kid. That's not a bullet in the gun, though, kids. That's an atomic bomb. Once you drop it, you can't keep doing it. <laughs> you can't engage like five times. And then another thing totally normal. They had this chick's engagement party at her boss's house. Nice of him yep. to host. Not a big deal, but also she used to date her boss and lived with him for a year and a half. I so don't understand the problem. And another He's- chick's dating a hockey player. He's really good. He plays in, like, France. But I mean, not he's too good for the NHL. That's why he plays overseas. Um, has hockey. But they're uh, they're kind of going through a rough patch because you know it's long distance and everything. There's no way he's fucking every chick. That now he's going to Sweden, <laughs> which is probably even worse. And then um, she doesn't like the 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 bitchy chick and her don't get along because of something that happened like four years ago about a sale that they just never talk about. They just don't get the along. Client. I just thought it was unprofessional. It's the great. It's it's a fantastic show, and it's three seasons, which is weird. I've not heard of this ever. No, I haven't either. I just love shows where um, the women are, no matter what time of day, what locale, they're just always drinking white wine. Yeah, <laughs> it's like they could be. It, it seems like all these people do is just have early lunches and drink mimosas. That's like all they do, and then sometimes Matt, sell house. How do I get that job? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, before I toss it over, uh, just or before I let you either finish or toss it to Cycle, how great is it when the real estate agents or the realtors go out with these? They're all like very attractive, like late twenties to mid thirties women, except for the one is a little bit older. How funny is it when they keep showing houses to these rich guys and then realize the only reason the guys are looking at these houses is to try and fuck them, and then they get super pissed off at the guys. Yeah. Happens at least three times. The one girl's married, and he's like, "Well, nothing wrong with having six drinks together." And she's hey, like, "I don't because there's a goalie. Don't mean you can't score." Amen, brother. <laughs> Anything else, Matt? No, it's just I. I hope when you guys jump on the bandwagon, I think I'm on episode three. I'm on going to be on episode four. Yeah, that's where I'm at. So we'll have to check in with each other. I'll hop on. I can catch yeah. up. Oh yeah, I bet they're twenty you can. minute episodes. <laughs> So they're only yeah, twenty minute episodes. Yes, they're quick. Yeah. That's why. Christ that's why I like think the tic tacs of shows. That's just like a normal <laughs> shit. Yeah, <laughs> just pop one in. Yeah, that's why when I told Matt about it, I was like, "This is gonna check all the boxes for him. It's trashy, it's uh, drama it's ridden, and it's short." Yeah, <laughs> gets in, gets out, and it's trashy. That's me a sophomore year, huh? Yeah. Hi oh. <laughs> I wish I was able to play sports what, and experience that with you. What a great you, audience. <laughs> what a great audience. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Matt? No, no. We're having fun. We're having fun tonight. <laughs> Have a good time. Cycling, how about you? What's in your cup? 
Yeah. Uh, Save the one we watched together. I'll, cause we'll, we'll talk about it. If you were okay. going to make No, no, you got it. You got it. Um, I've been watching All Be Gone in the Dark, a documentary series about the Golden State Killer. Mm-hmm. Um, and Patton Oswalt's wife, um, who was writing a book on the killer, who, um, if you don't I mean, she she passed away. And a lot of it had to do with her obsession with uh, with her research for the book, uh, for the killer. Um, honestly, it's incredible. It is the first documentary that has straight up scared the shit out of me. Uh, the Golden State Killer is maybe the most horrifying serial killer, uh, more so than the more famous ones. Because he was able to with it for her. And... Um, I have literally been watching it and I like get up to double check my doors. Uh, the way he was able to commit his crimes, like they describe it in such detail. And oh man, it is fucking eerie. It's like watching a horror movie. So if you like documentaries, if you like horror, absolutely watch this. It is intense. Um, it's yeah, I, I can't wait. I'm only halfway through it and I definitely recommend it. Jeff, I think, I think you're going to love it. You said you were reading the book, right? Yeah, so I saw the documentary was coming out and that there was the that they had completed her book after her death. So I actually said, okay, I want to purchase the book and read that before I watch it. Um, and so I'm probably a third of the way through the book right now. So I it's definitely been on my radar and I'm really excited. I mean, you and I typically have the same sensibility when it comes to like true crime stuff. Like if one of us likes it, the other one will. And a third of the way through the book, I'm like just ecstatic to watch the documentary. I'm still trying to figure out should I I don't know, because obviously the case, I won't spoil anything, but they're, like, reading the book before the documentary, I wonder what would be the best way to digest these. Maybe simultaneously. Yeah, I'm not sure. My, si- yeah. My sister was reading the book, too. She said she couldn't finish it. She started having nightmares. Like, I don't know how far she got into it, but she was like, it was, it's way too real. It's pretty um, harrowing. Because the worst part is this killer, like, the this isn't a spoiler, because it's kind of like a thing you learn in the, the first or two, crime or two, but... There's seemingly no motive. It's just like the strangers, right? Like because you were it's home. It's literally the strangers. Yeah. And yeah. you can and they find out later he was in the house when no one was there fucking things around, like messing with stuff. And then he would stay in the house after he had them tied up. And like I mean, it was it was psychological. It's it's horrifying. I mean, it, it it's straight out of a horror movie. Like it, I kept thinking of the strangers watching it. So don't be too scared. I'm not trying to scare you. Definitely watch it though. If it, it no, I'm totally it's not really well done. Yeah, no, it's good. There's, there's some laughs. You know, Pat Oswalt's funny. So, um, um, also, it, it been watching Doom Patrol on HBO as well. Didn't even hear about this show. Uh, it's DC. Uh, mm-hmm. I didn't know about it until I was listening to the Scrubs podcast that they're doing a rewatch on, and Brent, they had Brendan Fraser on because he's in one of the most iconic Scrub episodes. And he's just started talking about projects he's doing. And he's just started talking about the show on HBO. And it's a dark superhero take. And I was like, how have I not heard about it? And it sounded really good. And I'm about four or five episodes in. And I, I'm, I'm sold. I, I, Geiger, I wanted to ask you if you've watched it. No. It's on the... So I, HBO get, Max. I have HBO... What's the new one? Max. I have that. Max. Max. Is yeah, it on that? It. Okay. It it's, it's interesting. There's too it's many HBOs. Of, yeah, there's some. I don't know how. Six, man. I, to I feel like the six-year-old. Like, hey, I got the other one. That's the, the third one. <laughs> Fucking name. God damn it! I already. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's good. I, again, I like. I mean, everyone. I like the dark. I like dark stuff. I like dark shows. I mean, it has that dark sense of humor. Um, but it's basically like uh, for. They're not like super. They're not conventional superheroes. Uh, basically, they're all kind of fuck ups who all happen to eventually live in the same house, um, and they're never meant to be superheroes. They all have patterns and uh, powers, but that's not intended, and it kind of accidentally happens. Um, Brendan, like they're all characters are dicks. Um, it's animated? No, no, it's real. Yeah. Oh, it's uh, well, it's not it's, real. It, I, Oh, I mean, it's not a documentary. <laughs> yeah. really oh, happened. God, I thought it was real. What? It's, it's either animated, animated or it's real in my world. That's Pick it. one. Yeah. Uh, I, guess, uh, yeah. Then, I did watch Action Park as well. Jeff, you, you watched the trailer for that one. Yeah, that's that documentary about the theme park that like people kept fucking dying at. And the guy yeah. was his own insurance company. <laughs> yeah, he made up his own insurance company. What's on the, the problem? 
Uh, it's it's like an hour and a half. I wouldn't say it's really. It's fine. It's it's literally about like a total eighties nineties theme park that had no rules, and it was like it was run by teenagers. And Matt, the, you can only imagine what happened. I want to watch this. Yeah. Matt, the woman, where, how do you watch this? Goes. Matt, the woman, HBO, in the, trailer, baby. the woman in the trailer is talking about the owner of the theme park, and she and again I don't know the context because I didn't watch the documentary, but she goes, no one would in, would insure this theme park. So he started his own insurance company and insured himself. And I'm like, well, that just sounds like a fucking smart businessman to me. <laughs> well, no, he just made it kid, up. That sounds like I would watch that on the news and that'd be good publicity to me. Like, hey, mom, it's, it's so scary. People have died there. Let's fucking go. <laughs> sounds awesome. They talk about that. They talk to people. They actually talked to a couple of actors who grew up in the New York area that would go to it. And they like that was one of the draws that like people would get hurt. It's like, I'm not a pussy do this blah, blah blah it's like that was why to like show Damn, that they didn't right. get hurt yeah so it's called class action park it's it's short and it's fun i mean it's a great a title too to it. yeah <laughs> it's it's because the place was called action park and uh but if you like that 90s nostalgia 80s nostalgia it's that's definitely how you feel watching it but it doesn't really go anywhere you kind of you know it's just literally about that it doesn't really change was it like um, marshall erickson when he represented tuckahoe funland yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, and then basically, I need to talk about this one. For some reason, I decided to rewatch all of the Terminators last week. So nice. up to the Christian Bale. All right. Yeah, and uh, I'm always going to say that. Much, but... deep... eh, I don't know. There's nothing else to do. Uh, T th- uh, Terminator Three surprisingly wasn't as bad as I remembered. Um, it was a chick Terminator. Yes, uh, it was. It was. It was maybe because I remember it being bad. I actually enjoyed it, but I will say, Judgment Day is still one of the best sequels of any franchise ever. Oh, when you so revisit good. that, you forget how fucking awesome that movie is. Actually, the first no. Terminator I love. It's nostalgic '80s, which is kind of cool. Some of it you might find dated, but fucking Judgment Day, I'm like, god damn, this still fucks like hard in 2020. Dude, as a guys... kid, because I think we go ahead. I was going to say, did any of you guys ever go on the Judgment Day ride at Universal Studios? Uh, no. Was a poor kid. Oh. Dude, it was fucking sick. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, like, I actually didn't even, as a kid, because I think we all grew up, you know, we Terminator came out before we were all born. And so we knew T2, because I think it was, what, 10 years after the first one. I think I didn't even revisit Terminator. To me, it was, like, the iconic part of the franchise. And, yes, T2. The first Terminator is still incredible, but I, it's it's a very rare film that gets overshadowed by its sequel. Got a very yeah. good Guns N' Roses song in it too. I think it's "You Can Be Mine." I'm pretty sure in uh, T2. How are we not one of the first scenes on any of those? I, I was thinking that while watching. Thing. We were thinking about doing the first Terminator because I remember we were watching it once. Then we just did something else. <laughs> I just carried on living my life. Doesn't yeah. sound like us at all. <laughs> just carried on living my life. I don't know. <laughs> Did you get it? Anything else, Cycling? Oh, by the way, speaking of the kid in Terminator 2, the kid who plays John Connor, I think his name was Edward Furlong. He's in American History X. He really fell off the wagon, if you look him up. He was like an up-and-comer big child actor, and he has not had a good... The kid that uh, played Pecker, right? Maybe, yeah. He's he uh, he, Edward Norton's little brother, right? In American History X? Yeah. 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 That, that kid, yeah. He played Pecker, too. That's yeah, and he, uh, he's John Connor. So. And he was in these iconic films, and damn, yeah, if you read his Wikipedia page, he went south fast. Like Jake Lloyd South? Drugs? Yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. Jake Lloyd's listening in prison like, guys, I'm fine. Well, Jake Lloyd loves to it. We write Jake Lloyd on the regular, actually. <laughs> We're big Jake Lloyd fans. He's hilarious. When he gets out. He's coming to stay at my place, so I stay. Hide yeah, Matt, shit, with, boys. Matt, you might want to keep him away from the baby. I just... Yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah. Why but, I want my baby to turn Sith? He'll probably have some good fucking Jake Lloyd. To tell. Jake Lloyd sees the crib. He's like, "Is that a youngling?" You're like, fucking relax, Jake. Right? <laughs> Don't get any ideas. Hayden did that, not Jake. <laughs> Jake would do that. Same person. I could see Matt sitting in a corner of his arms crossed. That wasn't fucking Jake, okay? Was it? <laughs> he would have played Anakin totally differently. Give it, the chance. Anything else, Ronnie? <clears throat> nope, that's, that's it. Yeah. All right, I watched two things. I watched uh, Robin's Wish, which was released as we're recording this yesterday. This is the documentary on Amazon about the 
demise of uh, the great Robin Williams mm. and wow. his last few days. And it's very interesting. Like the anytime I see a documentary like this, like a celebrity, you know, who died the way he did, there's so many different ways you can go, right? You can make it a celebration piece of his life. You can make it uh, like what caused this to happen. And the Robin Williams piece is probably 85% the latter. It's what caused him to kill himself. And it turns out that this brain disease that he had was not only insanely debilitating, but like somehow uh, his body's response to it was like he was able to fight it off better than almost anyone that's had it. So he would keep going to doctors and they would say like, well, you should be having these symptoms. But I don't know if it was because of like Robin Williams willpower or what, but he would like, he was having some issues with his left arm. He had Lewy body's dementia, which is basically like a brain deteriorating disease where like your brain is just basically eating itself. Um, and you start to have like really bad hallucinations and like he would like, think things were happening and he even says they have the i guess his last movie was um the third night at the museum and a big part of the interviews are the director of that film and he's saying like in between takes robin would tell me like i don't know what's going on i'm not myself like i can't i don't remember what we just filmed 20 seconds ago like is any of this usable and the thing that i like that i think you guys will find interesting is the people they interview are like the people that actually knew Robin Williams, like not so much as an actor, it's like the people he had grown up with and the people that like his neighbors who had lived near him for like 15 years and just actually got to see him in real life. Now, Matt, I want to get your take on it when you watch it, because his wife, maybe I'm just the most cynical person in the world and I'm just a fucking asshole, but I don't buy her story, man. I can buy what she's selling you. I don't know. I just don't buy it. I don't buy it. I don't think she's complicit at all, but some of the tears just did not feel genuine, I got to say. Oh. And apparently there's there's one scene. I I don't want to spoil it for you guys, so I won't. But there's something that someone says in the documentary, and his wife doesn't know that this person says this, and I'm like, uh, what? (laughs) And it really makes you... I have I a might question watch them tonight. I, since I have not seen this, but I've heard a lot about it, and I have a big problem with celebrities committing suicide or killing themselves because the media fucking takes. Case in point: Chris Benoit, who um, killed his wife and his kids and everything. They blame steroids, blame steroids, but actually, we probably know it's CT now. But once you find that out, it's 15 years down the line, and no one gives a fuck. So yeah. I want yeah. your answer to this, Jeff. Was he suffering from depression that you see all the memes? Like, if you see someone depressed, they can do this. Or is this basically no, no, no. he was fine his whole life, and this was a disease that finally got the best of him in his later life, yes. I guess. He, he was not di- – that was the biggest misnomer that the media ran okay. He did not have clinical depression at all. Not at all. And that, that actually is one thing his wife's like, that part drives me crazy. Like, he was not depressed in the slightest. Yeah. Louis Body's dementia is – it's basically like – Alzheimer's on steroids where like your brain, like you're just losing it completely. Your brain like, like eats it, itself, right? Yeah, exactly. Fucked up. And, and he had like, so he did, I don't know if you guys remember this. I don't even remember the name of it now, but it's talked about a lot in the show that show that he did on CBS with Sarah Michelle Geller, where they like ran an ad agency. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. So that, that was like, yeah. that was what he was doing kind of towards the end of his life too. And his left arm was basically so debilitated that, Every single scene, he would have his hand, like, in his pocket. And, like, it wouldn't even be anything the director was saying. And then eventually they'd realize, like, oh, he can't even really use his left arm. And the last scene they did, he, uh, his Teddy Roosevelt in The Night at the Museum, Teddy Roosevelt always had his sword in his left arm. They had to put it in his right arm the whole movie because he couldn't do it. So, he, I, he so basically... I'll watch it just for that because that made me sick when it was like, Oh, well, I suffer from depression, so does Robin Wood. I was like, you didn't die of fucking depression. I was like, for Mork and Mindy, he was like the most happiest guy ever. You can't just fake that all the time. Like, he doesn't yeah. seem like he's depressed. And I remember the memes, like, wrong. like, is he the sad clown? And I don't doubt that, like, there are some comedians like that, but... Um, Phil Hartman's like that, yeah. Sure, sure. But, like, the whole, I think the big premise of the documentary is that, like, he died because he was undiagnosed with this disease. Like somehow doctors missed this. And then in the autopsy, one doctor was like, this is like one of the worst deteriorated brains with Lewy bodies I've ever seen. 
because he had, was getting brain scans and the one doctor, I don't know, like didn't recognize it or whatever, but it is a little bit crazy. Like some of the things surrounding his death. And again, I don't, I don't think his wife is like complicit at all, but the whole timeline of him meeting her and like her, and she is an advocate now for this disease, which is great. But some of the stuff she says, like their relationship surrounding his death, one person in the documentary knows the full story and they kind of give you a little bits and pieces. And I, I didn't want to be like, it? it's really short. It's like an hour, 15 minutes. Oh, well, I, I ain't buying that, Jeff. You show me somebody that owns a nonprofit, I'll show you a rich person. All tax free, <laughs> baby. All tax free. Exactly. Cycli knows about it. <laughs> Cycli knows all about that. Cycli probably works for half these people. Oh, shit. And I think we all do. We have all of, all of us just have a, such a soft spot for Robin Williams. I mean, he. Well, you know, he just, as a kid, he made us laugh more than anyone. Uh, he's in so many iconic films, whether comedy or not. Was it like, I, I had a feeling when I watched the trailer with you that I was going to get really emotional watching. Did you get emotional? Like, was it kind of that documentary yeah. or was it more eye-opening? No, it is. And it, it's really interesting. I actually forgot about this, Matt. I think you probably remember this. But uh, at Juilliard, like the acting school in, mm -hmm. in New York, Robin Williams and Christopher Reeves were roommates. Like, they were best yeah, friends growing up. Oh, wow. Yeah. Huh. And it talks about that a lot, like how Christopher Reeves, when he had his accident, Robin basically learned, like, you have to live every day and just enjoy it because you never know when something like this is going to happen yeah. to you. Um, but there is there's one scene where they show, like, B-roll from him as the genie, like, just improvising stuff that oh, they never God. use. And he had one quote that is, I, I won't spoil it for you, but it is so hilarious. I'm like, how did that not get in the movie? <laughs> He's just like going nuts in the booth, and he like he that's does this the director's like, cut we need is Aladdin nineteen ninety four or okay. two of just Robin Williams just riffing the, the whole time. The I would love to, I would just sit there and watch that for an hour of him just improving. I mean, I would tell his comedy show, but doing it when he has a, like a semi script in front of him would be so iconic. But he has one quote. If you guys watch it, you'll know exactly what it is. As the genie that I was like, dude, you had to put that in the movie. How'd you not get that in there somehow? He's just like making up characters who the genie would be like transforming into. And it's up to the animators to figure out what he's doing later. His stand up gets a really bad rap too. If you're if you're someone that likes the the sly kind of jokes of you'll hate Robin Williams because he's just so all over the place. I fucking love it. He's like a thousand miles an hour. You feel exhausted after listening to Robin Williams stand up and I love it. Oh my god, there's this one guy who like so Robin Williams lived in this small town in uh, Tiburon, California, which um Cycle, you'll get a laugh out of this, not to reveal your actual identity, but that's where EA Sports is located. Wow. <laughs> My hometown yeah. right there. Yeah, so he lives in Tiburon, California. But Matt, there's this guy who's like a local improv comic who Robin will like come down and like occasionally would throw him a bone and fucking do sets with him. And as Robin Williams is like about to basically die from this disease, he's on the documentary like, yeah, well, one Tuesday Robin said he would try to come down and he didn't. I'm like, what the fuck? Do you, what, do you want me to like, feel bad for you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm it's sorry he was like, fighting, yeah. like, fighting his brain. Like jumping off the ceiling fan or something. Yeah, but I'm, I'm glad that, I'm sorry your set uh, that you yeah. probably told like your aunt the who was Matt visiting. The matinee of your set on a Tuesday. And they show a little bit of them riffing together. And this guy, like Robin isn't trying to embarrass him, but this dude can't fucking keep up at all. It's like joke awesome. so that's robin's wish um mm. if any of you guys see it i'd be really interested to hear your thoughts i think i'm gonna watch it right I, after this to be honest with you so i do i we thought it was on amazon prime you actually have to rent it on amazon damn it yeah and i, I know you're really you're really hard pressed for cash these days because uh, of the sports sports gambling weekend we had last weekend that, that is actually very true between my gambling and buying an air fryer, I'm strapped. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah, fucking sporting case. The air fryer, fryer will pay for itself in three months. <laughs> that's though. true. That's an investment. <laughs> Matt's like, that's called an investment. Yeah. All right, but the last thing I watched, and actually Cycle has been telling me to watch this for years, but he was visiting me last weekend and we finally actually put rubber to the road. And that is Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Banner, have you seen this? I feel like you and I have talked about this. No, we've talked about it because I, I always... Like I have this dream of uh, making a movie from a like you don't know if it's the villain who's the villain and who's the good guy and bad guy, right? And you were like, oh, you would like this movie because of that. Yeah. So the premise of it, Cycli 
Psycho, you could probably explain it better than me. Can you tell them what the concept of Tucker and Dale versus Evil is? Yeah, it's basically like, you know, your generic uh, 80s, 90s campy horror movies where the teenager is going in the woods and there's a couple of hillbilly killers. And but uh, this is shown in the perspective of the hillbilly killers. You realize that they're just really un- misunderstood nice guys and uh and who just and, want to renovate their vacation yeah, you know there is and that's why i love the film because it's so ridiculous i mean it's 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 short it, it I, I mean jeff you can talk about this i it does peak i think the first half is extremely better than the second half but it's it's just a really fun movie especially if you have a drink or uh you know have something to smoke uh it is i i like crack up at the beginning of it but jeff you you just saw it i've seen it like a couple of times so you give your perspective so yeah, I think you describe it perfectly. It's it is really short. It probably peaks at the end of the second act. Um, but, but I think what the director was thinking. So what it does in the third act is it actually kind of just turns into a straight up horror comedy and stops mm-hmm. playing into the. These guys aren't actually killers. They're just like literally like a chick will jump in front of his car and then as he's trying to help the chick up, her friends come out and it looks like he's choking her by the neck or something. He's like, no, she's <laughs> like. We've got your her. friend. Why are they running away? We've got your friend. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, it, where it, it does peak when it gets away from that trope then. And I, and I think what the director was thinking was he was like, I can't do a, an hour and a half movie of just this, right? Like this will get tired and played out. But when it actually tries to be like a tell a story with <laughs> characters that kind of have a little bit of an arc and it becomes a real horror comedy, that's when it kind of loses me and becomes a little more generic. Yeah. It's not bad at any point, but um, I almost just wish it would have gone full 100% meta, stuck with it. Because I'm the type of person, and this might not be the person listening's comedic sensibility, the joke, ha- it's like a roller coaster, right? So it's funny at first, you keep doing it, it gets unfunny, and then if you stick with it long enough, it gets hilarious again. Like your commitment to the bit. I'm like, wow, you're still doing this? Family Guy does that all the time. It's like worth. I, I think it's you're you're exactly right, but it's it's because of the length and how like just silly it is. Is it's absolutely worth. It. it Doesn't take any commitment from you. Banner, you would love it. Matt, you would absolutely hate it. Okay. <laughs> That's my honest take on it. All right, I think that brings us to the last part of our show. Banner, do you have a question? Bruh. Never get tired of that. I remember you, Banner. You weren't on an episode a few weeks ago, and we were like, "What the fuck do we do?" How do we get yeah, I think out? Matt did it. It it was it's it was good. You lift, good, bro. Hey, you know I'm the backup quarterback. I can go three and two if he's out five weeks. <laughs> Matt's like, but we're gonna need to run the ball like 28 times a game. If that's yeah, okay. a lot of checkdowns and the defense needs help. Yeah, good. We can't field position. Can't get behind the sticks. No holding penalties. All right. All right, Matt. Tell him what we're doing for. Do you even lift, bro? Same thing we did, except for movies of Ronnie Cycli's life. We're going to do music of Ronnie Cycli's life, which is interesting because we don't ever talk about music. Talk about movies a lot on this pod because that's first time listener. That's basically what this motherfucker is about. So music. <laughs> what is a band that you can't stand or artist? Uh, Jaw fucking rule. I hate Jaw rule. <laughs> I don't know why, but I fucking hate Jaw Rule. Wow. Okay. Interesting. You talk about the Come on of the fire pod, Jaw. Yeah. Come on the pod, Jaw. We'll, we'll take, we'll go this. And I also have a genre I fucking hate country music. Well, if Jaw Rule went on every pod where they talk shit about him, he would never have time to do it. <laughs> I think that's actually, I, I, that's fine because that means he's busy not making music. So I am good with that. <laughs> he's just trying to create another fire festival. That's, you know what's that's crazy, fine. Outside of all the fire Festival stuff and the horrible songs he's done, I think Matt and I love the story about how he... So he was in Too Fast, Too Furious. Yes. And they called him to no, do... No, first Fast and Furious. Yeah, he was in the first one. Oh, that's right. Ludo's in the second one. Monica! Because okay. they called him for the sequel. You're right. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. They called him for the sequel, and at the time, Cycli, this was like early aught, so he was thinking like, dude, I'm going to be on top of the world forever. <laughs> Fuck this bullshit franchise. So they cast Ludacris in a separate role. Ludacris has gone on to make $118 million from the Fast and Furious films. And Ja Rule is Ja Rule. Yeah, that's all you got to know. And uh, for genre, I said I hate country music. I just, especially for where we live, I just cannot stand it. I'll if you that. know um, 
there is, if you know Bo, Bo Burnham, who's one of my favorite comedians slash writers, he has a song about country music. Never watched it. Go to YouTube and just type in Bo Burnham country. It's fucking incredible. You don't, you don't like bro country. I don't like uh, pop country, rock country. I don't mind like bluegrass or old style. Like, you know, give me some Johnny Cash stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's Real stadium country. country. That's how, if you go watch it, Bo Burnham explains it perfectly. It's called uh, stadium country. It's, uh, and it's fake, you know, basically guys who wear boots and, and, uh, but never have actually been on a range. Like, like wear a do you like George Strait? Kind of Not really, but I respect okay. him more than. I don't mind George artists. Strait. I love Johnny Cash, but like Luke Bryant, and I mean, I've hammered him on my fucking thing. I'm with Garth you Brooks, on that. Like, I respect him. I mean, Garth Brooks probably has the only country music song that I like actually have no problem listening to. Low Places, because who doesn't like that song? But, oh, um, but, yeah, Brooks, I can, can't do it, guys. Okay, well, well oh. there's no way you can piss me off as much as Thurman did on this one. Was what it? is oh, yeah, the yeah, band or yeah, artist you feel is overrated? The Beatles. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, what? I'm gonna go with, uh, <laughs> you Ariana fucked Grande. wanka. <laughs> Ariana Grande? Yeah, yeah, I don't get it, man. I mean, I know she, she can sing. Like, I've seen her, like... Where Fallon did like where he was able to like challenge her on different styles and she like was killing it. But like, man, I've tried. I have I have tried going down her Spotify like most playlists and I just can't get into any of them. I think I have one song of hers on my Spotify. I just I just I get that people like her, I get why, but she is really overrated to me. I mean she's this hot is, though, so you know this is a safe but, place to say that, yeah. Yeah. She does have vocal one talent. song, so I'm not really sure where to even read her. I know I've, I've heard it, but... That's the thing. I was surprised when I listened to her top plays. I was like, none of this is something that I would have have heard. Is she... It, I mean, she's obviously newer. She's hot right now, but is she one that sings breathy? Because I can't stand that. Everyone sings breathy now. No, she, no, no she's She not sounds like, like Christina Aguilera, to be honest. And she Baron... Has, uh, she's okay. power ballads. Her brother was on a, a season of Big Brother. Yep, Frankie. Mm-hmm. He was on two seasons, actually. Oh, I didn't know he came back. With I'm pretty sure Ron he came Bay, back. He was on Big Brother? Something. Yeah. It was a big deal because he's a YouTube star. Ah. Uh-huh. So yeah. are we. Was he a YouTube star before? before. Yeah, so are we. Measure our dicks. Okay, yes. uh, what is a band or artist you feel is underrated? Uh, Florence and the Machine. Um, oh. I Yeah, I think... She she deserves way more attention than she gets. I mean, if her voice is just fucking incredible, and you know she's one of the fewer women I, I would call it alternative or rock, but you know she has some poppy songs. But uh, my wife and I went and saw them, saw her and I guess the band in, in Dallas a few years ago, and uh, my God, like in person, it was just iconic. Like her voice, like was almost too powerful. But I just I'm surprised her music, her genre. And her music isn't more popular. I, I, I really, I don't, it checks everything on the boxes, but I just, I'm surprised it doesn't get more airplay. Not to say she's not famous. She definitely is, but just feel like she should be more, uh, she's more deserving of more accolades. How, how old is she? I don't think I've ever seen a picture of her. I think she's probably mid thirties, maybe a little older. Oh, that's way younger than I would have thought. Okay. Yeah. She's been around for a while. Maybe, maybe early forties. I don't know. Uh, but she is a total hippie, that's for sure. I mean, like, she was skipping up and down the stage barefooted the whole time. Like, she was having a, a really good time performing. But, yeah, I, like, I just, I really like her music. She's incredibly talented. Well, forgive her for being a free spirit. Jesus. That's true. Okay, I think I could guess this one, but I don't want to steal your spotlight. What is a band or artist you love? Why don't you guess? I want to hear what you think I like. What What you love? Yeah. I think it's BSB. Oh, I do have BSB, but that's a little later down. Okay. I mean, I get, I mean, I right. de- I mean I, <laughs> that's why I didn't want to, I didn't want to steal. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, I absolutely love them. I, I, I think it's hard for me because uh, I grew up in a musical family. Um, you know, music was like a part of it from everyone in my family played music and, and was involved in it. And so I have a lot of it, but like, I mean, I had... I think for me, the if, and Jeff, you know this, like probably the band I love the most is System of a Down. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. And, and, and not to say that there's not, you know, <laughs> I, 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 I think I have a very diverse sense of my music outside of country music. I love almost everything. 
But System of a Down, um, there's some historical reasons why I like them, like personal connections why I like them. But um, I I don't know. They, to me, even as a – in my 30s compared to how I was in middle school when I first discovered them, like it hasn't aged a day. I, I think they still – one hope there's but my god they they're always going to be uh my favorite fan just because of how iconic they were in my lifetime they're like the harry potter uh to <laughs> of books and movies to my music <laughs> that's because... never been compared before Probably in the history not. of the fucking world I don't know. <laughs> ever I don't know. we just said a sense that never <laughs> that has, but they... the other. system of a down is my harry potter to music so <laughs> yeah that's it that's a fucking t-shirt if i ever heard one <laughs> This is why I love this, man, because I haven't, heard, I haven't like, listened to System of a Down in a while. And tomorrow morning when I'm in the gym, I'm that's probably I'm going to play about four of their fucking songs. So they're a great fucking band. I haven't dude, listened to them for a long on, time, though. Toxicity. Put on. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're going to love it. Chop Suey. Isn't that one of their big ones? Oh, yeah. Oh, Chop my Suey, high. Toxicity, Ariel. Okay. Yeah. Everybody going to the party, going to have a good time. That's yeah, one of their good ones. All right. What? What made you fall in love with music? Band or artist made you fall in love with music? See, I, I think, um, so growing up, uh, my dad would always play like Roy Oberson, uh, Johnny Cash, um, mm -hmm. Elvis, and the Beatles. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, I know this is kind of, <laughs> sounds really corny, but because my family was so involved in music, it was like classical artists, like Mozart, um, things like that. And I, this kind of is attributed to music. Like if you've ever, the movies, I mean, if you've ever seen Amadeus, um, Mozart, like, especially his Requiem is like, it's, it's unbelievable. Like you don't have to be a fan of classical music to appreciate what he did. And I remember like, that was what I grew up on. Music was such a thing. My parents did every single day. Music had to, we had like a music hour kind of thing. And those were my dad's favorite artists. And so that's when, that's what I really liked. Like I grew up on Elvis and the Beatles. And because uh, that was my, my dad saw Elvis' second to last show uh, when he came to our city. Oh, wow. That's awesome. He showed me a picture of uh, Elvis at the show that he took. And he was not looking good. Let me tell you that. So, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like it was just kind of that between classical artists and just my parents' genre of like the 60s, 70s music uh, and being able to share that with them. Kind of how I got my love for movies too, came from them. You probably don't know this. I own every Elvis DVD. I, I fucking love it. I've always, my grandmother and my mo mother have always loved Elvis. And I just, I'm like, huh, a guy with great hair that's talented and gets chicks seems okay with me. Cool. I'll listen to yeah. it. <laughs> I definitely agree with you. Anyone that's into music, like really into music, different types of music, you need to start where it started and you don't have to like it, but you have to appreciate it in some yeah. way. And it's really fun, you know, from Mozart to every, like, from Elvis to BB King to, um, you know, the Beatles and everything, just to see how yeah. music evolved. I mean, the, even the fucking Beatles, you listen to the first record they ever did. And in the psychedelic 70s, they sound like a totally fucking different band. It's really fun to see how music evolved to me, especially from bluegrass to rhythm and blues mm -hmm. and how that created rock and roll of the 70s and 80s and stuff. So Same if you're a rap. really big music fan, you have to take a walk down memory lane and listen to a bunch of those artists. It's fun to and do. And that's why I know it's corny to say fucking Mozart. I get it. But like you have to understand in context, he was a rock star. Like he was. Yeah, he, he was. was he, yeah, he was the one doing. He banged all the wrenches. Yeah, sure. he fucked I, chicks and did drugs. I mean, that yeah, makes you a rock star. Did, That's all it takes, that really. He died at like thirty. So I mean, like it's uh, yeah. To me, I don't know. I just I love it. Yeah, I, I'm there always going to attribute my childhood to that. There were little kids in Eastern Europe with fucking etchings on their wall of Mozart, and they were like, "One day, Papa, I'm going to be him." You know, and they dreamed of that. And their parents were like, "No, you're not. You're going to be a farmer." And the kid did end up being a farmer, but you know, he dreamed. <laughs> Papa. Okay, uh, what what is a band or artist you can listen to over and over again? I see I'm going to be repeating myself because I'm going to say System of a Down again. Uh, but that's, it's kind of, it was hard for me to like, literally I could put on their first album to their last album uh, and even their B-sides. And and yeah, do they have some songs that are better than others? Absolutely. But I, I, and I, I know people will not like their music. My wife does not like their music, but um, I just, I can literally put it on at any time. Uh, and never sick of it. And then, uh, but to change up another band is Weezer's Blue Album and Pinkerton. Oh, yes, yes. Um, is, we Blue Album. Is yeah, guys, awesome. Fucking Weezer 
fucking Brian, rocks. Like, who's the composer on that? Rivers Kumo? Blue, Blue Album is such a good, like, road trip album. Like, you just pop it in and you can listen to all 12 or whatever 14 songs in a row. And... Talk about yeah. underrated. And I think, and Pinkerton, which is funny, is actually my favorite album of theirs. And it was, like, hated on and shit on when it first I, I don't like Pinkerton. Yeah, Pete, I no. get why. It's different. Yeah. And uh, no even Pinkerton. Rivers Kumo didn't want to play from it for a while because how people responded. But then you find out, like, it's also a cult classic. Like, there are people like me who it's, it is their favorite album. Um, but I, those two albums I could listen to nonstop over and over. I don't really like the rest of Weezer's discography, to be honest. But you And know, I think Rivers Kumo is a psycho in real life. I would never want to meet him. But yeah. Beverly Hills. That's when they lost me, man. I'm like, you're singing about yourself. I liked that song when it first came out. I was like, dude, okay, this is kind of like, the, this is a cool song. But I was like, but it's almost too mainstream that you're going to turn into Green Day, and then that's what happened. That's exactly what about the, <laughs> the song he did with Lil Wayne called I Can't Stop Partying? Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, he, they, they were the definition of selling out. Because they were literally a nerdy band. They were called Weezer because he literally couldn't even run in PE. Well, he just sounds like a bitch. <laughs> we need to add another one, like biggest sellout bands, because I got a couple. Okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> good Charlotte. I, I would say Maroon Five. They actually fucking rocked. Check out their first album, and they're just yeah. like, "Hey, you're good Michael looking. Just do chick songs." And I'm like, "Okay." What? And I can't yeah, blame I him. Like I mean, he's married to a model, and he's one of the biggest fucking... I mean, I'd do it too, okay? But still, it sucks. Giacchino, all his good stuff are just remakes of already good stuff. It's like, uh, just getting french fries from different places. Still french fries. <laughs> all right, yeah. what is a band or artist that changed your life? God, see, that's why I keep, like, I'm, um... Probably, do you guys remember The Offspring? Fuck yeah. yeah. That was yeah. the first introduction I got to ska slash punk. Um, I like ska. Yeah, and, and because they, I mean, they weren't so hard on the ska, like, you know, Sublime. They weren't all the way ska. Um, they were just kind of the mix of the genres. Um, they were my introduction, because it, it was my sister's album. When I was like five or six years old, I remember she had uh, the one where it's like a skeleton. Uh, but it's like yeah, it's like yeah. the veins, mm -hmm. um, and I remember like sneak listening to that album because I think my you know was a little I was a little too young for it. It was like the one that had come out and play. Got to keep them separated. Um, yeah. And, and Americana was, really was their big one with the Americana kids swinging the and swing. Yeah. 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 Uh, and that was for me the first time. And like because I think I was still early enough on where I was listening to my parents' music. You know, like mm -hmm. I was maybe listening to a few are there but but to me that's what led me to my love of like raging as machine system of a down that oh, kind of yeah. thing because i i just remember being able to see my sister's album and and you know and like a few years later blink 182 and all these bands come around and, and i will always credit they might not be my favorite band but i always credit offspring for that introduction did you find out about because the first concert i ever went to was you and me seeing cake live it's oh one my of my God, favorite I love did you yeah. discover Cake before or after Offspring? I think after. They were around the same time. Cake's been around for 30 years, probably. They have, and I don't know if anyone has more albums than Cake and Offspring. They both are still releasing music. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think I discovered Cake until a few years later when I started listening to like the rock station, uh, you know, on the radio. Offspring came out with Hit That. That was like maybe 10 years ago. That was off of like oh, a new album. That. That's a pretty good song. Yeah, I don't even know. Do they even make bands like that anymore? Because it seems like if you're a rock band, you're just like like death metal now. Like yeah, exactly. There's not a mix of like what I appreciate about System of a Down. I know that sounds weird. Bromstein, um, Offspring. You have this music that like now like everyone's kind of put into a corner. People would think oh System of a Down is like hard rock band. We actually listen to them. Like they're not a screamo band. Yeah, they're like, like a punkish kind of. They, they are like this mix. Like there's times and and Sarah Shankian is literally like singing like operatically, like his voice is iconic. Like same with uh, Offspring. I mean, like they were ska, they were rock, they were they had elements of Middle Eastern tones. They had all these kind of things going on, and and I don't feel like we get. Maybe it's out there, but I don't feel like we get that anymore. It, it's out there, but just modern rock stations now that I listen to, it's like uh, Five Finger Death Punch. You got to be like yeah. that. 
or you're not good luck finding or you need to go way chiller and get on pop okay uh what is a band or artist that surprised you uh i'm gonna go with the genre here and this is kind of weird k-pop um i i I think i thought k-pop was you know silly and then when i went to thailand that's like all they played and i found myself really really liking it and uh and and to the point that i literally before this pod went on a run and i listened to k-pop the entire time so uh yeah black pink bts let's go i fucking did not expect to become a k-pop fan banner chloe bennett was a k-pop star before she did agents of shield What's K-pop? It's Korean, uh, Korean pop. pop. Like oh, Korean okay. Britney Spears and boy bands, basically. I can yeah. get into that. Boy like, bands, girl bands. I was like, there's like eight members in each band. It's like ridiculous. There's one really big one that's in the States, right? Yeah, what is the big one? There, I think there BTS are a Korean one, band but... and there's like eight of them. What I saw a poster of them at Walmart. I think it is BTS. I think. I mean, that's what we I should do assume. like gag Christmas gifts on the Broke Force Squad, and just everyone ends up getting a BTS poster. <laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> I'll put up my man cake. Why not? Sure. Banner would have to like, sign it. Like, yeah, the whole band signed it. But like, Banner's signed like, it in like Michael Scott English, like on his thing. Like, <laughs> signed it in perfect English. Okay. Banner's like, you got me the one I already have. Why would I? You kind of skipped ahead on me. I mean, what is your guilty pleasure if K pop yeah. surprised? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> K-pop's not a guilty pleasure. I'm like straight up. Uh, Backstreet Boys, Jeff, you know that. Um, yeah. Fucking, I don't care, man. I I love them. Um, my wife and I saw them in Vegas. I high fived AJ. It was. I haven't washed my hands since. <laughs> Can I just say, my favorite Snapchat I've ever gotten was Cycli seeing them in Vegas, and obviously he's hammer drunk. And as they're starting to sing, I want it that way. He sends me a video, and it says, "Greatest pop song ever, Fight Me." <laughs> I also think I sent you the video and I'm just so drunk. I'm singing the entire song on the video instead of me showing you Backstreet Boys singing. The- <laughs> yeah, I remember. <laughs> like, you're not even seeing it. That's like, I don't want to see you. Are. Yeah, it was. Uh, they're, they, God, they, they, and they still have it, man. They still fucking have it. <laughs> uh, another guilty pleasure as I, I, I will. I love Kesha. I fucking love Kesha. Mm-hmm. I talked about her on mine, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 if you read about her in real life, one, she's actually, like, really brilliant. She's been through a lot of shit, um, especially if you that was read fucked about up. her. What's yeah. that? Yeah. What happened yeah. to her? Yeah. It's fucked up. And uh, everything she went through, and now that she's releasing new music again, uh, yeah, I, I, I really like her. I, I think at first I thought, of, you know, she was really dumb like a lot of the others, and then yeah, I grew to appreciate her. It. It's so true, like, when you watch A Star is Born, like, the way that they make you commercialize, like, what happens to Lady Gaga's character. Oh, that's true, yeah. I mean, it's like, you have to basically become this persona that, like, well, do you like money and fame? Like, well, yeah, okay, well, then be this fucking dumb idiot who shakes her yeah. ass and tits on stage. Like, all right, yeah. I guess I'll do that's that. That's why I, I love to listen to bands' first albums in their entirety and then listen to their new ones and I'm just like, <laughs> like, yeah, this is basically commercial, I mean... Train yeah. is another band. Listen to their first album. They are a fucking rocking band. And now wow. they're like, yeah, here's Soul Sister. Sing this. Like, really? <laughs> like, why? Yeah, it'll play doing a Coca Cola commercial. It's fine. Yeah. All right. What is the best band or artist you've seen live in concert? So I saw a few back when they were at their prime. I saw Arcade Fire in, um, That'd be good concert. in I think, Austin or Dallas. And this was, I think, after their Intervention album, uh, their first two albums, which I, I think I was going to say that on earlier things I can listen to. Uh, Funeral and Intervention are just uh, incredible albums, um, probably emotionally speaking, too. And I remember when they were singing Wake Up and like people were like crying in front of me, but it was just that good. Um, it was really it was just they were they were, they were so talented. If you don't know Arcade Fire, especially their earlier days, like kind of what we're talking about now, they've gone a little more poppy now. Um, but Arcade Fire at that time, I think, was the best band in the world. And then, um, in, in, a, in another sense, uh, in a very different type of concert, was Gogol Bordello. And I don't know if anyone's actually heard of Gogol Bordello here, but Gogol Bordello is like this gypsy punk Eastern European band. And they're, they're decently famous. They tour uh, around the United States all, all time. But if you ever listen to them, um, my God, you can tell the second you start listening to them how much fun of a show they put on. 
if you just YouTube uh, the song uh, Start Wearing Purple and they're at like Coachella, just fucking watch that video and tell me you don't want to be in the middle of it. It's they they came to the city I live in now and my god, it was so much fun. Like even if you don't like their music, like their show would be worth it. Speaking of Arcade Fire, go watch um, the Where the Wild Things Are trailer. The cut of Wake Up in that trailer is enough to get you to be crying in just the two hour, two minutes that they uh, they put it together for that. It's like unbelievable. Yeah, it, it's such a that's one of the best songs. Like that's such an iconic song. Yeah, the banner. You should listen to Gogo Burdell. I think you'd really like him. I'm gonna listen okay. to him after this pod. I yeah. got a uh, Don't Gypsy Wear Purple Punk. on Spotify. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, dude, I love, I don't think I, there's any type of music I really don't dig. Just like, wait until you hear his voice. It's exact like, the second you hear his voice, is a, he, he sounds like Borat. It's like Eastern <laughs> it's, it's gypsy music. It's literally okay. exactly what you're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> don't use the powers on me, Gypsy. I'm not kidding. Um, <laughs> all right. What is a band or artist you should have seen live by now? Uh, I'm gonna go with Rage Against the Machine. Yes, that because, was mine too. Um, Thank. Was yes. It? <laughs> ah, nice. Because I, they're kind of like one of those. Sh- you know, they're gonna put on a fucking show. Um, I, I just, I love Rage Against the Machine. I mean, I miss, I miss political bands I, like System of Down, Rage Against the Machine. They could fucking rock and have a message, and um, we don't really have that anymore. I'm loving that people are now discovering that Rage Against the Machine was political. I think that's really funny. People are tweeting <laughs> like, I'm never gonna listen to. No, I saw it. I told Matt this. I saw a tweet. Somebody was like, I like Rage Against the Machine till they got political. And this guy goes, What machine do you think they were raging against? The yeah. printer? <laughs> the washing machine? Like, yeah, like what? The dishwasher? <laughs> I love it. Yeah. But Rage Against the Machine, it's like they're an iconic band. And, and they're not one of my, like, they're not like, I can't listen to every one of their songs or I can't, like, you know, nonstop, like, like a COVID system. But Man, if I could see them live, that would be definitely at the top of the list. Cycling, though, would you, like, if it was this weekend, would you want to see them live with everything going on in America? Like, like they get shit burnt to the ground anyway when nothing's yeah, going on. Like, a whole, a say, whole state would get burnt to the ground. I'm already signing a waiver of my death by going to a Rage Against yeah. the Machine concert in a normal circumstance. So, it's uh, like, and I was, like, I was like, supposed to see, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, someone's like, dude, have you read the waiver on the back of this ticket? Dude, we're fucks at this show. Dude, funny enough, I w- yeah, I was uh, speaking of bands like that. I, I I was supposed to see this last weekend, Rammstein in Chicago. Wow. Yeah, Jesus and Christ. that was another concert. I was like, I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to come back alive. <laughs> so don't worry, you got rescheduled to next September. That's if you awesome. come back alive, though, from that, you're almost like upset. You're like, well, that's kind of a letdown. Yeah, I didn't get burnt by their pyrotechnics. I live through it. Yeah. Listen to Banner and Mine's triple X commentary. We give Romstein oh. a lot of love. The first ten they minutes. They do are in that. I forgot about that. They are. I forgot we did a commentary. <laughs> you were great on it. Though. If you were so high right now, I'd ask you to go find our scream commentary because we did it somewhere. I swear we positive. did it. It was on. I, I never. It was on Netflix. If you did, I'm watching it because that sounds awesome. You did a throwback. I know that. You did. No, it was on Netflix. It was only like an hour fifteen, and me and Banner did it. Like it was probably four or five months yeah, ago. Yeah, because we we talked at length how a garage door could not kill you. Yes, <laughs> that's that the that that killed in, Rose in McG- the McGowan. And I remember that because Rose McGowan was in it. There's probably some Me Too jokes. It's disgusting. It shouldn't happen, but we did them, and it's fucking taped somewhere. We need to find it. <laughs> so we can put it online. Oh well. Man, it's a garage. Why don't you go under the garage right now and see what happens? It's been a train wreck since the word go. <laughs> All right, I think that's it for episode one twenty six of the Bro Force Squad podcast. Before we leave the people, Banner, what's your advice to them? You've been you look very wise right now. You just need to make sure you pull over for emergency vehicles, okay? You don't know who's in the back of that ambulance. Could be a family member. You need to get them to the hospital and save their life. Be a hero. It's beautiful. I mean, let's not let's chill out. People <laughs> aren't heroes. Hero. Just that's fucking doing, doing what's what expected to. of them. <laughs> that's like the husband who washes dishes. Like, look, like babe, the bare that's minimum. <laughs> it's like the bare minimum. Banner's like, you have to bribe these motherfuckers yeah. or they won't pull over. Look, it's called being a salesman. (laughs) 
honey, I'm a fucking hero. What'd you do? I got in the right lane. Oh. So blowjob, right? <laughs> Kiger, what do you want to leave the people with? Uh, it was mentioned earlier, but we need to mention it again. Wakanda forever. Rest in peace to our king, Chadwick Boseman. Uh, it's a fucking sad deal, man. Cancer sucks. Hopefully we find a cure for it one day, but... He was Black Panther. Hopefully there won't be another. Hopefully they'll just um, bump up her, his sister or something. They don't need to recast that. He was fucking no. amazing. Yeah. I I, uh, I can't really add to that. I haven't really been able to put into words what I think about that. It was just shocking and incredibly sad this past week. Again, not telling any, anyone that he was battling that for four years and getting in the shape he got in just shows you, like, and doing the promotional stuff and the charity work he did just shows you the type of guy he was. All right, Cycle, this was your episode. I think you you really opened yourself up, and I want to thank you for that. You were <laughs> you were you were vulnerable. Uh, how does you know, it feel? I, there was so much I didn't <laughs> say that I wanted to say. Talk about my love for dark movies like Midsummer. I didn't talk about my love for. Oh my god, I could go on for like three more hours. I appreciate it, guys. I'm shocked that the Muppets wasn't mentioned. It, see, 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 I already told you. I told it at the beginning. This is going to be like the Oscars. There's so many people I didn't mention so that I want to apologize to. <laughs> you wanted to say. Yeah, but I, the music started coming on and fucking Meryl Streep's rolling her eyes, so I have to get off. Like, <laughs> Act like you've been there, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry your cameo in Mamma Mia 2 didn't get you any love. All right. For our enforcer, the paint, Matt Geiger, the mad scientist, Brian Banner, and our legal counsel, who MGM is scared shitless of, Ronnie Cycli. I'm the Mayor Jeff Hornacek, and we are the Bro4 Squad Podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening to us. You can follow us on Twitter, at Bro4 Squad. Find us on Letterboxd, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. If you type in Bro4 Squad as three separate words, we will come up there and check out everything that we post on our website. We have Bro4Squad.com. Till next time, we will catch you. Probably not the movies yet, but maybe on a same streaming service. And watch Selling Sunset. Maybe one of the HBOs. I don't know which one. Or the nine. Even HBO doesn't know what the fuck the difference is. Like, just pay for the movie. <laughs>